If you want to learn web development, where do you even start? It's hard to find the right advice without suffering from information overload. That's why I've created this beginner's roadmap. It lays out all the basics you need to learn web development. We're going to go through each step so by the end of this guide, you'll have an understanding of the basics of web development and what skills you need to learn. I recommend doing steps 1, 2, and 3 in order. Then, depending on whether you want to focus on more front-end or back-end, you can do steps 4A or 4B. I personally think it's a good idea for front-end web developers to learn at least a little bit of back-end, and vice versa. Knowing the basics of both will help you know if you like front-end or back-end web development better. Sound good? Let's dig deeper into the roadmap. Before you get into actual coding, you'll need to understand some general concepts as you start your journey into web development. How websites work, the difference between front-end and back-end, and using a code editor. All websites at their most basic are just a bunch of files that are stored on a computer called a server. This server is connected to the internet. You can then load that website through a browser, like Chrome, Firefox, or Safari, on your computer or on your phone. Your browser is also called the client in this situation. So every time you're on the internet, you, the client, are loading data from the server, as well as submitting data back to the server. This back and forth between the client and the server is the basis of the internet. Web developer roles typically fall into three categories, front end, back end, and full stack. The terms front end, back end, and full stack web developer describe what part of the client server relationship that you're working with. Front end means that you're dealing mainly with the client side. It's called the front end because it's what you can see in the browser. Conversely, the back end is the part of the website that you can't really see, but it handles a lot of the logic and functionality that is necessary for everything to work. One way you can think about this is that front end web development is like the front of house part of a restaurant. It's a section where customers come to see and experience the restaurant, the interior decor, seating, and of course, eating the food. On the other hand, back-end web development is like the back-of-house part of the restaurant. It's where deliveries and inventory are managed, and the process to create the food all happens. There's a lot of things behind the scenes that the customers won't see, but they will experience and hopefully enjoy the end product, a delicious meal. Fun illustrations aside, both front-end and back-end web development serve different but very important functions. When you build a website, the most essential tool that you'll use is your code editor, or IDE, Integrated Development Environment. This tool allows you to write the markup and code that will make up the website. There are quite a few good options out there, but currently, the most popular code editor is VS Code. VS Code is a more lightweight version of Visual Studio, Microsoft's main IDE. It's fast, free, easy to use, and you can customize it with themes and extensions. Other code editors are Sublime Text, Atom, and Vim. If you're just getting started though, I'd recommend checking out VS Code, which you can download from their website. Now that we've covered some of the broader concepts of what web development is, let's get into more of the details, starting with the front end. The front end of a website is made up of three types of files, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These files are what is loaded in the browser on the client side. HTML, or Hypertext Markup Language, is the foundation of all websites. It's the main file type that is loaded in your browser when you look at a website. The HTML file contains all the content on the page, and it uses tags to denote different types of content. For example, you can use tags to create headline titles, paragraphs, bulleted lists, images, and so on. HTML tags by themselves do have some styles attached, but they're pretty basic, kind of like what you would see in a Word document. CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, lets you style that HTML content so it looks nice and fancy. You can add colors, custom fonts, and lay out the elements of your website however you want them to look. You can even create animations and shapes with CSS. There's a lot of depth to CSS, and sometimes people tend to gloss over it so they can move on to things like JavaScript. However, it's really important to be able to convert a design into a front-end website layout using CSS. JavaScript is a programming language that was designed to run in the browser. Using JavaScript, you can make your website respond to different inputs from the user or other sources. For example, you can build a back-to-top button that when the user clicks it, they'll scroll back up to the top of the page. 
As we mentioned, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are the basic building blocks of front-end web development. In addition to them, there are a few other tools that you'll want to learn at this point. Package managers are online collections of software, much of it open source. Each piece of software called a package is available for you to install and use in your own projects. You can think about them like plugins. Instead of writing everything from scratch, you can use helpful utilities that other people have written already. For instance, you can simply use this slider plugin instead of having to code it all yourself, which could take days to figure out. Why reinvent the wheel if you don't have to? The most popular package manager is called NPM, or Node Package Manager. You can also use another manager called Yarn. Both are good options to know and use, although it's probably best to start out with NPM. In addition to package managers, you'll want to become familiar with build tools. Module bundlers and build tools are another essential part of the front-end workflow. On a basic level, these tools run tasks and process files. You can use them to compile your SAS files to CSS, transpile your ES6 JavaScript files down to ES5 for better browser support, run a local web server, and many other helpful tasks, saving you a ton of hassle if you were to try to do all these essential steps by yourself. Three tools that you'll continue to come across a lot are Gulp, Webpack, and Parcel. Personally, I like using Gulp for my own front-end workflows, where I just want to compile my SAS and JavaScript files and not do too much else. The last tool you'll need to learn about in this stage is version control. Version control, also called source control, is a system that keeps track of every code change that you make in your project files. You can even revert to a previous change if you make a mistake. It's almost like having infinite save points for your project, and let me tell you, it can be a huge lifesaver. The most popular version control system is an open source system called Git. Using Git, you can store all your files and their change history in collections called repositories. You may also have heard of GitHub, which is an online hosting company owned by Microsoft where you can store all your Git repositories. At this point, you've learned the basics of front-end development and have a choice to either delve into additional front-end skills or learn about basic back-end web development. With additional front-end, there are some more intermediate skills that you will want to learn. I recommend that you look at the following, SAS, responsive design, and a JavaScript framework. SAS is an extension of CSS that makes writing styles more intuitive and modular. It's a really powerful tool. With SAS, you can split up your styles into multiple files for better organization, create variables to store colors and fonts, and use mixins and placeholders to easily reuse styles. Even if you utilize just some of the basic features like nesting, you'll be able to write your styles quicker and with less headache. Responsive design ensures that your styles will look good on all devices desktops, tablets, and mobile phones. The core practices of responsive design include using flexible sizing for elements, as well as utilizing media queries to target styles for specific devices and widths. For example, instead of setting your content to be a static 400 pixels wide, you can use a media query and set the content to be 50% width on desktop and 100% on mobile. Building your website with responsive CSS is a must these days, especially as mobile traffic is outpacing desktop traffic in many cases. Once you have the basics of vanilla JavaScript down, you may want to learn one of the JavaScript frameworks, especially if you want to be a full-stack JavaScript developer. These frameworks come with pre-built structures and components that allow you to build apps quicker than if you started from scratch. Currently, you have three main choices, React, Angular, and Vue. React, which is technically a library, was created by Facebook and is the most popular framework right now. Angular was the first big framework, and it was created by Google. It's still very popular, even though it's been surpassed by React recently. And Vue is a newer framework created by Evan Yu, a former Angular developer. While it is smaller in use than React and Angular, it is growing quickly and is also considered easy and fun to use. You might be wondering now, OK, well, which framework is the best? The truth is, they are all good. In web development, there's almost never a single choice that is 100% the best choice for every person in every situation. Your choice will most likely be determined by your job or simply by which one you enjoy using the most. If your end goal is to land a job at a company, try researching which framework seems to be the most common in potential job listings. Don't worry too much about which framework to choose. It's more important that you learn and understand the concepts behind them. And once you learn one framework, it'll be much easier to learn other ones after that. Let's move on now to our last section, backend web development. 
The backend, or server side of web development, is made up of three main components, the server, a server side programming language, and the database. As we mentioned at the very beginning, the server is the computer where all website files, the database, and other components are stored. Traditional servers run on operating systems such as Linux or Windows. They're considered centralized because everything, the website files, backend code, and data are stored all together on the server. Nowadays, there are also serverless architectures, which is a more decentralized type of setup. This type of application splits up those components and leverages third-party vendors to handle each of them. Despite the name though, you still do need some kind of web server to at least store your website files. Some examples of serverless providers are AWS, Amazon Web Services, or Netlify. Serverless setups are popular because they are fast, cheap, and you don't need to worry about server maintenance. They're great for simple static websites that don't require a traditional server-side language. However, for very complex applications, the traditional server setup might be a better option. On the server, you need to use a programming language to write the functions and logic for your application. The server then compiles your code and conveys the result back to the client. Popular programming languages for the web include PHP, Python, Ruby, c -sharp, and Java. There is also a form of server-side JavaScript, Node.js, which is a runtime environment that can run JavaScript code on the server. Finally, you'll need to learn about databases. Databases, as the name implies, are where you store information on your server for your website. Most databases use a language called SQL, pronounced SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language. In the database, data is stored in tables, sort of like complex Excel documents. Then you can write queries in SQL in order to create, read, update, and delete data. The database is run on the server, using servers like Microsoft SQL Server on Windows servers and MySQL for Linux. There are also NoSQL databases which store the data in JSON files as opposed to the traditional tables. One type of NoSQL database is MongoDB, which is often used with React, Angular, and Vue applications. Some examples of how data is utilized on websites are, if you have a contact form on your website, you could build the form so that every time someone submits the form, their data is saved onto your database. You can also store user logins on the database and write logic in the server-side language to handle checking and authenticating the logins. And that's how I would recommend you start your journey into web development. I've compiled a list of resources to help you get started learning at any of these stages, linked below. Thank you.